at LightPath. We are revolutionizing how organizations connect to their digital destinations with connectivity solutions that are powerful, reliable, secure, and 100% fiber. We deliver all fiber connectivity with next generation optical and packet technologies that provide unsurpassed service levels, flexibility, and security with bandwidth options up to an incredible 800 gigabits per second. The LightPath All Fiber Network is expanding to reach more locations, serving thousands of customers, and we're growing fast. Increasing our reach, investing millions of dollars in network upgrades, building into new locations, expanding into new markets, pushing the boundaries of our network technologies, and enhancing our next generation customer service model with a team that is focused on your success. From custom engineered network solutions to consultative delivery and customer support, we are innovating across our entire organization to better serve our customers and improve your overall experience. LightPath is more than just a service provider. We are your strategic network partner. Our team becomes your team. Our network becomes your network. LightPath, your path to connectivity, your path to innovation, your path to success. Talk with a fiber connectivity expert today and experience the light path difference. Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon. Uh, as you saw in that sizzling open, uh, we were trying to innovate and make sure that we got there quickly. Uh, for those that know me, I'm Doug Turtz. I'm the Senior Vice President of Enterprise Sales here at LightPath. Uh, I know some of you that are out there. Thank you for joining today, taking some time at your lunchtime to, to sit with LightPath and hear how we're innovating. Uh, we, are, we are trying to do things differently. Uh, LightPath, as you'll see, has been around for uh, 30 years, but it's really a new LightPath. And I'll jump right in. Uh, we're going to spend just about 20 minutes talking about what we're up to, but really how it resonates. It's, it's not, a, a, you know, on one hand, of course, everything's an infomercial for what we're doing, but really how it resonates for you and give you some things to think about as you're thinking about your network and your connectivity partner. Uh, so LightPath, as I said, around for 30 years. Our foundation is to have a really dense and robust fiber network. So we started uh, and grew out of the cable company. So if you recall Cablevision, which is now part of, uh, became Altice, Altice USA, we have the foundation of fiber that spans throughout Long Island, North Jersey, up into Connecticut, Westchester, Hudson Valley, and all throughout Manhattan. We then have taken that fiber network and continued to move it uh, first north. We, we've connected our assets that are in that New York metro area on steroids up to the Boston metro area. We, we made two acquisitions and organically have expanded in Boston to the tune of over 150 buildings and growing route miles by the day up there with the team. Additionally, as we think about our expansion, we'll talk more about Boston a little bit later in the Prezo, but we are talking to our customers about where they want to go next. We have driven our fiber down towards Princeton, down towards Philadelphia and Trenton. We continue to expand based on where our customers ask us to go. So think of us in the Northeast, but we are edging out every day and densifying inward every day. And really that's being driven by the demand of our customers with large bandwidth, unique route requirements. And we'll talk about how some of those verticals play. We've done a great job of connecting data centers. So we want to be in the data center space. We know that is a critical uh, endpoint for both your own servers, data, cloud connectivity, financial services, on ramps for all that you pick up to support your business from an application standpoint. So every day that we see new data centers being built or new data centers being expanded, we, we want to be first ones in. And we don't look to our customers to say, you've got to front that bill, you've got to cover construction. We know the investment that it takes to build uh, from a fiber perspective. So our, uh, our vantage point, so we have this full suite of connectivity and video services 
that we bring across the verticals, connecting to these data centers to make sure that our customers can reach their endpoints with really robust bandwidth. And then once we have the robust bandwidth, and we'll talk about when we build into sites, how we connect, how we bring this to the uh, uh, locations, we do so in a manner that enables both physical fiber connectivity so that you have the strands needed to do what you need to for your business, but also the logical connectivity of being able to use the equipment that we put on the endpoints to enable multiple services and get efficiencies from how we construct and configure our networks. So the final thing I'll, I'll point out here is, you know, the strong financial position. We have about $400 million in revenue and we're jointly backed and held as a private company that's part of Altice USA owning over 50% of us slightly and Morgan Stanley Infrastructure Partners just under 50%. And collectively, you know, that, that puts us in a position where we are enabled to go and build, construct, innovate for our customers. You know, we want our networks to be the pipes that help you do your business, that help you innovate your business, more so than us being the ones that know how to run education or know how to run financial and healthcare services and government. It really comes down to making sure that you have the bandwidth the resiliency and capacity needed to run your business. So the leadership team, and I won't spend a, a, a ton of time on this, but the key factor here is Chris Morley, Doug D'Alessandro, Phil Olivero, Chris Yost, Dave Mayer, Eric Swanholm, myself, and, and Herb Boynton, who's, who's not pictured here, but would be up. Yeah, the, the group of us has known each other and worked together for years. And the thing I would say about this, whether we were at Azeo or Crown Castle, Light Tower, above net over the years to build our networks and build our relationships with our customers and partners out there, really uh, the key is that we are A, singularly vested in mission critical data networks, B, we are singularly vested in our customers' experience and all available as part of escalations a part of innovation discussions, a part, a part of where you want to go next. It is not a group that wants to be distanced from the deal or distanced from the business. We want to be in the weeds, thinking about it from a day-to-day -day tactical perspective, as well as where we're going to go next uh, for our customers and for our partners out there. So it's a great group. We've worked together and every single one of us can step in and really help uh, in anything that we do together or collectively for our clients. You know, next on the list is so, okay, a lot of fiber companies out there are saying that they do things differently, but what do we really do? And I, I'm going to work backwards here. So, you know, customer service, it's, it's a words that obviously get thrown around quite a bit, but we have taken a hard look at this. We've, you know, obviously benchmarked ourselves with Net Promoter. We have looked at it from a, a client survey perspective. We've rebranded to this awesome uh, uh, colors. Uh, for those of you that are Pittsburgh Steelers fans like myself out there, it's uh, really good. It makes me feel very comfortable to see the gold and, and black. And hopefully we'll have a great season with multiple quarterbacks that we got. Uh, but the reality is we want to be uh, very available first and foremost. So when we think about our knock and our call centers that are taking in calls, it's not just staffed with folks that can, can take a call, but rather with folks who can either answer or immediately, and I stress the word immediately, pivot to our engineers to help uh, them solve on the fly. In addition, the engineering team has looked at how to make sure that we have alternate paths and the ability to fail over. So we just dealt with a big uh, fiber cut, which is the reality of living in this business at times. And rather than sit there and have our customers down and we'll get you back up in 24 hours, we were able to take one of our alternate routes, the great equipment that we have that enables uh, failover, and point them down another path, even if they were only buying point-to-point -point services, just to get them up temporarily. And we look at that as a way for us to really differentiate ourselves with our, our clients. We also uh, will sit on a quarterly basis or monthly basis from a reporting perspective to what we're doing well, what, what we aren't doing well, and hear that feedback. So we really want to be in lockstep with our customers uh, when it comes to customer service and make sure that every day we're trying to improve that experience. So if something is off, 
we, we want to think about it and say, how do we do it better three months from now as the year progresses? You know, the solutions in fiber network side are kind of in lockstep. One enables the other. So I, I always talk about the toolkit. So we have this fiber asset and we'll talk about the route miles we have and the 13,000 buildings and growing by over 60 buildings a, a month at this point with uh, uh, driven by our customers and driven by expansion. But the reality is, you know, we look at the fiber as the underlying asset. Then we have a, a toolkit. Of course, we have standard products, which we'll, we'll touch on here. But we look at these and say, OK, if we're going to take this network and these solutions, really, it comes down to sitting with the customer and saying, how do we want to take this toolkit and leverage it for you? So we are on call sometimes with competitors where the customer uses two vendors and says, OK, this vendor goes down this street. We need you to be diverse and on a different street. So those are the kind of things that we have the power and enablement to do. And our sales engineering team, who's front and center with our customers, married at the hip, and more in a consultative manner than a sales manner, they will figure out and show you exactly on a map where your data is traversing. And that is something that is highly unique in this industry. A, to be able to say we know that. B, be able to share it and share it comfortably and show you exactly where we're building, constructing, and where something is going to go. So really, really a, a nice um, differentiator, if you ask me, when we look at uh, critical solutions and knowing that you can't go down because this network it is imperative to your business. Uh, moving on here, and I did touch on the network at a high level, but this gives you a good uh, physical view of what we're doing. And you can see these you know, yellow veins that are running in the Northeast here are very robust fiber cables that traverse, uh, in many cases, bridges or under railroad tracks or, or uh, river crossings to make sure that we have all the necessary egresses and ingresses that someone would need in order to run their business. So um, you can see we have 20,000 plus miles uh, of, of fiber route miles. So those are the cables. The cables, of course, may have anywhere from 144 to now 1,700 strands of fiber as the new reels are being put in that just give us the robust connectivity to, to service anyone from uh, you know, a, a, a small company that has a single office in Manhattan to somebody that's in the wireless space and may have hundreds and hundreds of nodes that need connectivity. Uh, all of those things are highly um, available for our customers and our team to look at and use. The other thing that's key as we think about it is because we grew out of the cable company, um, the, the nuance is that a lot of our equipment sits in cable legacy um, uh, pops, if you will, or head ends as they're referred to, which tend to be physically diverse from a number of carriers. So when folks are looking at us and looking at another carrier for a dual vendor solution, it tends to be that the A and Z location may often be the same, but that, that route in between, we may be in completely different buildings, completely different physical routing, completely different power sources, which really gives, uh, again, a robustness to someone, our own network, but a customer's network looking at it from a dual vendor, uh, a, a side, B side. So that's uh, uh, something to think about when you think about what LightPath brings differently. And again, uh, one of the things I'll point out here, as I said, we're growing 60 buildings per month. We have, we have a programmatic approach. And again, thinking about the new LightPath, the, the, the legacy LightPath definitely had a, an approach to lighting new buildings. I think we've amped that up. Um, we want to know where you want us to be. Our buildings um, that we're adding every month come out of a number of different programs. We've identified key buildings in all the cities we're in. We've identified a program that allows us, if you're near net to our fiber, to construct and not saddle our, our customers with those build costs because we believe that robust opportunities will come in the locations. Again, all of this speaks to getting kind of near net or on net pricing for our customers, even if we have to saddle some of that build cost ourselves. And, and that's okay because we believe in the growth of A, bandwidth, and B, our performance and other services that can come along. So uh, uh, pretty exciting as we've talked to customers throughout the New York metro area and beyond now, uh, that opportunity for us to go and build on their behalf. 
you know, and I, and I will point out there, I guess when I think about the new light path, bringing this together and weaving it, you know, the innovation, the, the sizzle is, you know, some of our customers and, and prospects have come to us with their, with their tough situations, their problems, their challenges, and that's okay. We don't mind. We, we would love to help out and, and love to make the investment. Uh, because it a expands our network and b helps a, a good customer or potential customer. So uh, feel free to bounce ideas off us, or if you're up against something. Um, so so the company has really evolved over the last uh, year and a half now. Uh, that Morgan Stanley and Altice partnership was formed on uh, November 30th of 2020. I joined the company on December 1st of 2020, and we've had uh, an incredible uh, run since then, correlated with uh, a number of uh, uh, people that joined the company, the leadership team, many came on board since then, as well as a number of new employees to go with the already incredible foundation that, that Lightpath had from a personnel perspective. As I mentioned, we, we entered Boston, we first bought a downtown ring, then we bought a second company, and then we started constructing and earning our phase three expansion out to central mass, let's call it, and we have eyes to go beyond that. But uh, it, we've also gone north up to uh, um, parts of Massachusetts where there's some key critical data centers. We've done a major expansion in Queens. It's interesting that we had a lot of fiber, again, in Long Island and Manhattan. Queens was one of the places there was a little bit of a vacuum and we had a number of customers in healthcare, GovEd, uh, and the financial services, as well as some of the carrier side of our house, asking us to uh, build out Queens. So we have uh, invested to the tune of over 100 miles of high count fiber throughout Queens as a borough, and we are lighting new buildings and enabling new services every day there, uh, driven by, again, GovEd, as well as uh, the financial and wireless services. We expanded south to Princeton. So uh, we're, we're continuing to edge. Princeton was another area where we had a lot of customer interest. There's data centers in the Piscataway area that need to connect down to there. And it's getting us on that transition down towards uh, Trenton and down towards Philadelphia. So as we add these route miles, um, it's, it's not to say like we did this and it's gonna just service one or two customers. We bring these cables and it puts us in a position to enable any services that we have throughout these cities. And we, as a, you know, I always talk about it, I obviously run sales, but at our core, we really are a construction and engineering firm that takes these expansions and then says, okay, how do we expand off the expansions? Before you know it, you're going another nine miles. So like the Dayton, New Jersey, another expansion that came off of one of the other expansions. So uh, we, we continue to kind of branch out and densify and look forward to doing that. We're uh, now looking at, uh, we just green lighted a third route down to the Ashburn area. So if you think about some of the uh, long haul connectivity or MPLS connectivity that goes down south, traditionally it has run uh, along the railroad tracks, or along the highways, there is now a Western route. You think about people doing disaster recovery and a lot of those routes go from Boston to New York, to Philadelphia, to DC to hit Virginia. Well, that's not necessarily where you want your data going if you're talking about disaster recovery or replication. You can have that on one side, but we now have a primary or a secondary route uh, that goes to the West and avoids Manhattan, it avoids Philadelphia, it avoids Washington, D.C. to reach those data centers. And that's uh, something highly unique that we just uh, put in place as well. So the, the, the portfolio, you know, we've talked about the fiber as the underlying footprint and, and the equipment. Um, but what we're seeing, and again, this is driven by our, our customers, you know, we think of our connectivity as the core so our ethernet services, optical services, internet access, private fiber networks, meaning that you get your own strands of fiber, your own equipment that no other customers touch, uh, and dark fiber really being at the core. And they enable a number of these other services, the unified communication, the managed Wi-Fi, DDoS protection, which has become extremely relevant in our education space. Um, our cloud connect, so the on-ramps to reach, whether it's AWS or Azure or Google, Oracle, and a number of other cloud connect 
uh, places that we go to, uh, obviously on the landing stations, data centers. So again, we take this core fiber, we enable the big pipes, the re resilient pipes, and then we have these other services that we layer on top for our customers as needed. Uh, again, I'll, I'll point out one of our, I think, big differentiators, many of our competitors do not play in the unified communication, hosted voice enterprise, voice space. So being able to offer that as a first line service, we just uh, integrated as well Teams so that Teams can be offered as a part of that is great. So uh, Teams calling, so all those things are very, very relevant for what we're doing now and listening to what our customers asked us and how we evolve the product set on, on a kind of monthly, quarterly basis. So I, I touched on Boston, I won't do too much on it again, but I think it's critical and, and really, you know, our customers in the New York metro area are coming to us now to connect to their offices that they have there. Our customers in Boston are asking us to connect down to New York metro area and really pushing us to go beyond. So as we expand this 200 route mile network uh, on a regular basis, everything you see that's in yellow, excuse me, everything you see in blue is complete. Uh, the red phase two is actually taking uh, the lead over the speed of the yellow. Um, so we're gonna have that one done relatively soon. And then the yellow, the Southern route will be uh, on next. So you're getting out to Central Mass, to Marlboro, there's key data centers out there. And going up to that Burlington area that's at the North, there's key data centers there. And of course, back to the Cambridge, Somerville area, Waltham, the life sciences, universities, the financial services, uh, all just very, very robust. Couple that with increased uh, needs for wireless connectivity in the carrier space, as well as the, the, the major hyperscalers. Uh, we're seeing that content drive out of, out of Boston and the innovation that comes out of Cambridge is second to none. So uh, having large bandwidth there is critical to how things get done. So, you know, with that, you know, I think about it this way. So I touched on the fiber, I touched on the products. Uh, hopefully people are saying, so how, how do you get all this data all over the place, right? So we're up in Boston, very uh, robust network down in the New York Metro, uh, the most robust, more miles than anybody else down here in density of fiber. So we can cover every nook and cranny from the Eastern end of Long Island throughout Jersey, et cetera. But you know, transporting that data and all the customers that we have, having been around for a long time, we, we decided we needed to innovate the backbone. So we innovated very, very recently. Uh, all these dots you see in blue and red are part of our uh, head-end pops, and now it includes, of course, Boston, so we've got to update this picture already. But we, and the red is all complete now as well, we put in the latest and greatest uh, Sienna equipment so if folks out there are familiar, Sienna is a major optical um, platform. We have standardized on the Sienna at the backbone core level. Sienna now enables 800 gig links with the capacity or the slots, channels, filters, however you wanna to refer to it, to add more capacity between these links. So if you're somewhere up in uh, central Connecticut and need to reach someplace, a data center in central Jersey, We've got every one of these dots that we can wrap through as we see. Obviously, there's the most efficient routes, but again, going back to that statement about if a carrier that you work with already goes one way and we need to go another, we can point the data to go a different direction. And this, this uh, core backbone plays into all we do. So some of the bandwidth, of course, can be levered for MPLS. Some of it can be levered to transport internet before it hits your upstream, downstream pops. So it's got a lot of different uh, uh, advantages to it, and it supports really intrinsically every single protocol that is out there, as well as it can support encrypted data, which is very critical we're finding when it comes to patient data or key financial data that retail might have. Uh, so we see that quite a bit, and this is really starting to get traction. And the fact that we have so much capacity is really allowing us to give uh, our customers a great experience which ties into latency, congestion, all the things that go with uh, the network things that come up. So we're really excited about the partnership with Sienna that we're able to put this in so quickly, uh, given the supply chain world out there, we're trying to stay ahead of that as best as, as we can. Everyone faces those challenges, but it, it's really something that we're doing quite well. 
We also, interestingly, leave the New York metro area. So all the things I talked about with New York and Boston are our main fiber density footprints in metro, but we also have long haul connectivity that goes out to Chicago and out to Dallas, Ashburn, Atlanta, and that can be 10 gig, that can be 100 gig type connections uh, readily available. And we just green lighted. Uh, so we had this transport, which was great, with big time pipes out to these places, but we did not enable MPLS previously. So uh, the any to any ability to fail over smaller bandwidth ethernet, we just enabled that or we just green lighted it. It will be turned up over the next few months. Uh, we obviously have the pops and the rack space. We just need to get the equipment and earmark what pieces of our long haul backbone are gonna support that MPLS backbone so that you have optical kind of point to point waves that are uh, never will fail over, but they have a set latency versus an MPLS configuration that could route. And we're gonna add to this map. So you'll see some more uh, links to make it even more resilient as we go forward. But it's, it's pretty exciting because we have a lot of customers in the New York Metro and Boston Metro who are asking us to reach their Chicago office or their Texas office, Atlanta, and kind of have an any to any type connectivity, uh, even if it's you know 100 megs really easy to do that once we enable this MPLS. So our sales team is starting to, to offer that up to the marketplace right now, and uh, we're pretty excited about it. So the last slide here before we you know, open up for any questions anyone has, and again, thank you so much for your, your time today. I hope everyone gets to enjoy some uh, uh, lunch and you know the nice weather. Hopefully we'll come here one of these days. It was kind of rainy I in New York City this morning, but um, you know, just a couple to hit on, and it's by no means all the verticals we support, but, uh, you know, in the healthcare world, you know, we think about, you know, again, going back to how we're different and what we're doing differently. We used to service the hospitals really well in their data centers, but now if you think about the systems, they're buying up offices, practices, ambulatory. Um, we are now being asked to, to service them by connecting out of these core or out of these data centers and be able to be very flexible because offices ebb and flow, the, the doctor's practices ebb and flow, they consolidate, they change the location. So how we do that and the ability to know again where that data is, know where the underlying fiber is, have a core connection that might need 10 gig, 100 gig encryption because it's supporting customers, and then being able to route out to something much smaller at the edge is really kind of a hybrid network in one. So the healthcare and understanding all the things that go around the routing and the data integrity are critical. Uh, and we have expertise here in terms of um, overlays, in terms of our product team who are specializing in healthcare. And I, and I could think of the biggest healthcare um, uh, systems around in some form or fashion, Lightpath is critical to their everyday existence. Uh, on the financial services, you know, we obviously look at routing and it goes back to what I said about being able to see where your fiber is in the ground, see where your data is going, understanding latency sensitive applications, whether it's low latency trading or connectivity between offices that are critical and, and trading desks and, and feeds from people like TNS or Bloomberg or any other market data critical aspects that make financial services go. And then of course, being able to connect to the key financial data centers, data centers whether it's connections to NICE or NASDAQ or other key places and obviously the cloud connectivity and support of applications since uh, the financial services, just like everyone else is unable to ever go down. So uh, we, we are in the throes of making sure that we have unique routes, different routes, uh, understand exactly how failover works from a primary and backup perspective between us and, and sometimes, you know, wireless in the case of people using wireless uh, for, for trading because, you know, it's the most direct route. So all those things coming into play and having a, a deep expertise in, in the financial services and how we benefit uh, those folks is, is critical to our everyday as well. And then the final one I'll just touch on here, and again, by no means is this meant to be uh, comprehensive, just some examples. Uh, you could pick any vertical and we could hopefully talk to you about it because we see many of the different applications that are slightly different. They all have their overlap, but uh, the government education space, you know, being on state and, and federally sponsored blankets, being uh, really, really deep in USAC, 
understanding, you know, well, some of the uh, opportunities to take advantage of funding from different state, local, federal governments. We have an overlay team that helps in, in driving many of those things and making sure that we are really, really buttoned up, A, for our customers and B, for our own compliance, because we really want to make sure that we can continue to scale and, and be, uh, you know, a, a part of it, but also be influential because customers will tell us that they want to see uh, certain things part of uh, a USAC type sponsorship uh, who governs the, the, the dollars for, for many of the schools. Uh, and, and now, of course, with uh, distance learning and, and uh, the, the fact that we came, hopefully came through, even though the numbers continue to ebb and flow uh, on the pandemic, but the need for uh, the ability to pivot and having a network that has, again, that capacity, B, the ability to come and connect and bring sponsorship out to schools and, and students and understand the challenges they face is really what we do every day. And we've really spent a lot of time looking at hybrid networks uh, to make sure that the IP and the WAN can really, really work together regardless of where someone is. And, and then of course, each school seems to be a little bit different in how they leverage data centers, whether it's internal using some of their buildings or third party, but those, those kinds of um, designs and aspects are what we see every day. And I guess the last piece I'll, I'll touch on is, you know, internal to the buildings at schools, we're, we're seeing more requests for Wi-Fi and voice. So uh, as we connect in and the ability again to use that and have it be something that is able to morph a, a, across a network really, really is driving some of the innovative discussions we're having with the schools and, and government entities. So, um, you know, I, I guess I appreciate the, the time. Uh, I want to be able to answer any questions that anyone has today. If something rings a bell and says, hey, I didn't ask it, but you ever need to reach out to us, uh, again, going back to that customer service and experience, we're, we're here to help. The last thing I'll leave you with is if we can't do it, I'll tell you that every time. If it's outside of our purview, it's something that LightPath isn't able to handle, we will tell you. If we have to build something, we will tell you our best estimate of how long it's going to take. Uh, equipment, as I said, with supply chain, all those things are front and center to what we do and why we have such strong partnerships with our, our customers. And uh, hopefully uh, I gave you something to think about today. So I'll, I'll pause there and, uh, and open it up and hopefully we can uh, find out if I can innovate enough to see if I got any questions here. Okay, I have one question here. Thank you for this question. The question is, since everyone can't see it, is you know when it comes to the school systems, how are the hybrid networks um, tying into data centers? So uh, thank you, thank you for the question. So interestingly, they're they're tying in a couple of different ways. So uh, if you remember, I touched on is we when we build into a, a facility, we will bring extra strands of fiber. So first of all, the physical aspect, we always check that box to make sure that there's extra strands, so that if we have to do something quickly, we can build that out. Once we have that and we put the equipment in the end, we can point the data circuits wherever they need to go. So. Uh, if the data center is where people are ultimately connecting into through either VPN or if we are hitting the schools and, and bringing it back through our own Ethernet uh, product set, we can set that up so that it's easy that if somebody moves off-site to another location like their home, all of a sudden they have their home network, they can tunnel into wherever the school system and we can work with them creates that gateway. So that piece would be the hybrid over the internet, unless they're adding and, you know, for, for maybe administrators, uh, it could be their own, the school network could be extended, but generally speaking, it would be through a, a VPN and the bandwidth would be there. Um, ho hopefully that helps. If not, I can, I can talk more or ask an additional question. Um, I have one more here about when we construct fiber networks, uh, is it our own team that does the construction? Interesting. So um, we uh, do it in a couple different ways. And, and it, 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 we always are the project managers, the designers, and often are the splicers. Like anything else, depending on where you are geographically, um, you have to use subcontractors, union labor, 
we always follow the, the, the rules that are set by buildings. So if we're going into a building and it's a union building, we will have union labor subcontractors that do the work. Our folks will be on site to oversee it. We take full responsibility and ownership for all of the construction that goes on. So there would never be a situation for anyone out there where you have to um, tie into a third party to listen uh, and get the updates. We create a project plan, project managers oversee it. Uh, our folks, depending on where it is, may handle that physical construction or we will sub subcontract it out and oversee. But that's after you do all the design work, uh, the um, um, right of way, any, any um, uh, right of way procurement that needs to be done, whether it's on the poles or under the streets, that is all handled by light path uh, first and foremost. Um, so I know we're uh, kind of running up against it here. I don't see any more questions right now. Uh, so I, I guess I can pause there. And as I'm talking, if anyone has any last ones, uh, we can we can answer them. Otherwise, you know, feel free at any point to, to find me. I'm on LinkedIn or if you have my email, it's uh, douglas.turks at lightpathfiber.com. Um, but in the meantime, you know, I, I'll, I'll leave you with this. You know, Lightpath, again, does a lot of things for a lot of people. Uh, we, we do it very well. We think we do it better than others, but we aren't um, done learning. You know, we, we, we want to learn every day about what we can do better and hear from our customers. Uh, our, our CEO and I are about to go meet a customer right now to, to talk to them because we want to have that C-level relationship with what we do and want to be part of, of your every day and help you run the business that you need to to be successful. So. Uh, again, thank you for listening to a little bit about Lightpath. Uh, it's always tough when there's no uh, back and forth on a video, but hopefully you got something out of it. And again, if I can answer anything as we go forward or the Lightpath team, we're, we're all here to help. We're about 400 people deep now and, uh, you know, growing in a, in a nice controlled way uh, that uh, has, has, you know, our sights set on being in more places to do more things but really only as our customers are asking us to. Uh, we're not going to go do something wild. We're going to do something pragmatic and continue to deliver the service as we go along that makes us and you successful. So thanks again for your time and uh, enjoy the uh, start of summer here. Be well.